The Indian Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir is our top focus this hour as a BJP leader. His father and brother were shot dead by terrorists in Kashmir's Bandipora district. The police has detained 10 cops for failing to protect Sheikh Vaseem Bari and his family. None of the cops deployed for the protection of Bari were present at the time of the killing. The shooting happened at the family's shop, which is near the Bandipura police station. A combined team of state police and army personnel have launched a manhunt to nab the terrorists. Meanwhile, several politicians took to Twitter to condole Bari's death. Former JNK Chief Minister Omar Abdullah said that the killing showed that the violent targeting of mainstream political workers continued unabated. In the meanwhile, BJP President J.P. Nadda also said that the sacrifice of Bari and his family will not go in vain. And for more details and to bring us the latest on this story, I'm joined in by our correspondent Ishan Wani, who's joining us live from Srinagar with more insights. Let's quickly go across to Ishan. Ishan, has the Jammu and Kashmir police ruled out any motive behind this attack? Also, have they been able to establish the reason for the security lapse at the time of the crime? Uh, well, firstly, it's a serious lapse on part of the security establishment and mainly the police because they were deployed for the security of this man who has been critical of the uh, not only the militancy in the Kashmir but also the other political parties. Uh, now, firstly, uh, he has been a staunch uh, supporter of the BJP in that particular area which has been disturbed uh, in the past as well. There have been militant attacks in Bandipur, so he was a protected person with at least eight cops being present at his house. But he stepped out of his house and was at the shop, which we are told is run by the family and and that's when uh, these militants appeared outside the shop and shot all of them dead. Uh, now, they were shifted to the hospital, but all of them have scum. But the police has launched an investigation not only to see the part of lapses that were there uh, because of the uh, all the personal security officers who were present on duty. And we are told that they were on the first floor of the house, just see a lapse. Once you are protecting somebody, you have to be on the ground, on the ground floor, so that you can react quickly in case there is any attack. But since they were on the first floor, they couldn't really attack. Uh, they couldn't really attack back. Uh, but, the, uh, but the police will have to investigate deeply that uh, who who is the group which is the group behind this particular attack who have uh, killed all these three uh, now his father we are told uh, you know Ram Madhav has tweeted his father was also associated with the BJP he's a leader of the BJP and uh, that is why uh, we are seeing that uh, there is a condemnation not only from the BJP but also other political mainstream political parties in the Kashmir Valley so this also points out at uh, the uh, serious lapses uh, that could be there uh, on part of the security right. establishment we have seen in the past as well there have been attack on right. political party and political activists and and, uh, but the security forces say that they'll be soon able to track all these men who have been uh, who have been behind this particular attack. Right, Ishan. Also taking a cue from what Omar Abdullah had to say that the killing shows that the violent targeting of mainstream political workers continues unabated. It's important to talk about how what happened yesterday is not new in Kashmir. Well, absolutely right. The last time we saw any a person who has been associated with any political party was a Sarpanch of uh, the Congress. He was uh, shot and killed in uh, South Kashmir. We have seen several attacks unfold basically on the ground level workers who are deeply connected to the people on the ground and are establishing mainstream pol politics in the Kashmir Valley. Particularly if we talk about South Kashmir, there have been uh, many people who have been killed in the last year, during this year as well. Uh, but the forces say they cannot uh, provide protection to each one of them because it's a huge set of people who are on the ground and are talking to people uh, so that there could be a democratic process could happen. But at the same time, uh, the militants are trying to, uh, you know, stop that particular democratic process, make their point, uh, you know, there and uh, try to, you know, make some buzz in the news as well, uh, that all is not well in Kashmir. But at the same time, security forces have said that they are not able to provide security to each one of them. There have been these killings happening in the past as well. But yesterday's killing that since they were father, son and uh, his uh, other person were also there and they were shot inside a shop. Uh, that is something which is shocking for uh, the, particularly the mainstream political parties who have been demanding some sort of security cover to their political party leaders. Several of them have lost the cover after the abrogation of Article 370. And that's when there was a heated argument and a political debate about why the security of some of these leaders have been taken back. Uh, but let's we have to wait and watch whether a security will be provided back to some of these political leaders who have lost right. it in the past. Right. The lack of security and perhaps... The, the existing flaws in the security system is also something that the forces will have to perhaps focus on on that note. Thank you so much, Ishan, for bringing us all the latest from Kashmir.